What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I want to be showing off my first place Tempai list that I was actually playing at Locals the other day. As you guys can see, this was my prizing for first place. But before we actually get into this video, uh, I want to do a little pack opening for you guys. I don't typically do these in uh, my first place profiles, but uh, I wanted to open some info. I got some info. Let's open it right up. Okay, that's what I'm going to start with. But I came first place with Tempai. I think this deck is absolutely insane. And I also want to preface it that uh, I have no uh, Trident Dragion in here. Okay, no Trident Dragion, it was never needed, and uh, it's it's a really good card, trust me. If you guys have access to that card, play that card, it's insane, but you guys don't need it. I promise you guys you don't need it. I, I found that the deck was perfectly fine, you can kill without it. So yeah, this is this is quick disclaimer, no Trident Dragion needed. But let's get into these packs over here. These OTS packs, I'm gonna actually not open, because uh, I'm gonna do this for a YouTube video later, but let's open these info packs, because I have no idea what could be in them. Could be something good, could be a QCR. I want the Millennium stuff so I can bring you guys a Millennium deck profile. So let's open it right up here real quick. Let's see if we pull anything from our prize packs. So just a super rare over there. I'm just gonna skip the comments because the comments are not that important. We have a super rare to start it off. Let's see if we can get a secret rare, an ultra rare, something good, something good. Another super rare, maybe Google Room. It's not too good to start things off. We got two more packs though. Let's see from these two packs. If we can hit something better than a super rare at least. I had to work hard for this first place. A third super rare. <sighs> okay, no, no, no. No, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. We gotta hit on this. There's no way we don't. There's no way we don't. We, there's no way. Grinded for first place for nothing? Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Oh, I mean it's an ultra rare. Uh those weren't great packs. But let's get into the deck profile. So I'm gonna move these away now and I'm gonna show you guys uh, how powerful this deck really is, Tempai. We all know, I, I think by the time you guys are seeing this, while EU Nationals was going on, uh, I was at Locals. That's when I played this. And then EU Nationals, I'm pretty sure Tempai won. Board Breaker build. This is not a Board Breaker build, but uh, I think there's so many different ways to play this and it's still very, very good and very, very relevant. So let's get things started. The standard stuff over here. So three Pydra, of course, best normal summon of the deck. Three Chundra, it's an extender. I'm playing two Fodra still. I know some people cut it to one. I'm still playing two. I really like this card. I think the recursion from the graveyard is very, very important. On top of that, this making your uh, Tempai Dragon Monsters, or I guess it's all your Fire Dragon Monsters, can't be destroyed by battle. I think that's really important as well. It comes up a lot. That's why I'm still on two Fodra. And I'm only on one of the Genroku and one Dora Dora. Uh, Dora Dora is essentially just a fourth normal summon if you don't open Pydra. And that's why I'm just on the one. Pydra is, of course, always going to be a better normal summon, but this is, of course, an option for you. And then Genroku, the only reason I'm at one is because you're either getting it from Dora Dora, that's really the only time you're ever getting it. When you are searching it off of like a Sangan summoning as well, like that's another option for you depending on what your hand looks like. But uh, I don't like this card. Now you guys could argue, oh, the reason you play two is because it's like a Poplar, like you want one in deck so you can search it and special it. Yeah, that is true. However, at the same time, like it doesn't really come up as often as you would think. So that's why I'm only on one Geruku, one Dora. Three summoning, of course, I could search it off summoning, I could search it off the Dora Dora. We're on three Kaiman as well, of course, and then one terraforming and that's it for the tempai cards like this is very very simple very standard i would say the only thing that's not standard i think is people are on two gun roku and one fadra i still like two fadra fadra is really really good so that's it for the tempai cards um i don't think there's much to argue about there now for the hand traps and slash board breakers i'm on three fenrir fenrir is one of the best cards in the game like there's no matchup where this card is bad and in my final round i was playing labyrinth actually um you guys might see this, but on the Spanko Duels channel, I actually posted a video of my finals match. If you guys ever want to see my locals matches, I always do that. You guys can check out Spanko Duels. I think we just hit 500 subscribers on that channel. Let's see if we can get it to 1,000 soon. But yeah, if you guys want to watch that, you guys are going to see how powerful Fenrir is. Fenrir, as well as any other board breaker, as well as just so crazy in so many different ways, right? So that's why three Fenrir is a must, in my opinion. I decided to play the Bistials. So one Magna, two Druis, and one Baldrake. The reason I wanted to play three different names is because they're all, of course, once per turn. So I didn't want to draw like double Druis, for example. Of course, Druis is always the best really really good hand traps they're good into format they're good into pretty much everything in the format because fiendsmith exists now they're good into Bell, of course they're good into even snake eye now but i didn't play any snake eye but they're really good into snake eye now because of the fiendsmith stuff right so these are still really important and then i'm playing three ash of course uh three imperm i'm playing three droplet i think droplet is insane if you are able to activate a card like uh where's my deck over here if you go like second let's say and oh you always want to go second you can activate kaiman activate droplets on the kaiman and, and you can do that with all your spells right even your power spells uh, speaking of power spells we're playing uh, lightning storm and harpies there was actually in my round one i think it was playing up against no in my round two it was up against you bell i'm pretty sure you bell fiendsmith in my round two and he had nightmare pain 
throne and like kind of like the board so i go lightning storm he i think attempts to negate it i can't remember exactly the situation but he attempts to negate it i go droplet send lightning storm and then actually funny enough i had a fodra this is why i like fodra right because i had fodra and and uh i think it was chandra in hand right so i sent the lightning storm from field and then i also send the chandra from hand and then this way i can normal summon my fodra so even though the hand looks kind of quote unquote bricky it sets you up right so that's that's just another reason why i like fodra situations like that when they come up it's really really good right but again these are like the board breakers i chose to play i wanted to play more hand traps but i think board breakers is like they're still so good right so it's kind of a mix of everything here and then for our consistency just prosperity and, and call by the grave to protect you as well 40 card main deck i wouldn't play more than 40 in my opinion 40 is still i, I mean the deck is very consistent three summoning three kaiman three pydra uh with dora dora now it, it, the deck is very consistent however i just think Playing more than 40 doesn't make sense. You can fit a lot of non-engine already. There's no reason to play more, right? Moving on to the extra deck though, I did say, like I said, there's no there's no Trident Dragion. If I had one, I'd be playing it, of course. I'll be honest, there was like one or two games. I'm like, yo, if I just had Trident Dragion, I could just turn off my brain. You have to think a little bit more without it, but it's still really good. You're playing two Biden and one of this guy. This guy's insane, man. This guy is so crazy. Even ending on this guy is, is really good as well. Like if you can't OTK, you can end on this guy and it becomes really relevant as well. So I really like this. This is this was MVP. All eyes meteor burst, honestly, was MVP all locals for me. I made this guy i think three times in that in that in that day this card is absolutely insane one cue ball this only came up once this never came up for me this never came up for me either but in theory they are really good just for different situations never came up i didn't need them but i wouldn't not play them this one maybe you can cut if you're playing trident dragy of course but black rose is just really really good right so uh, i like playing these ones over here and then uh, because i'm not playing trident i decided to play more link monsters because i was afraid of stuff like d barrier which i'm happy i made that decision because i got hit with d barrier like all day so i'm really happy i made the decision that I did but for link monsters of course i'm playing seals mvp this card you'll see in the side deck why this card is mvp when you're forced to go first this card is auto win against you bells auto win against so many different things i played light and darkness dragon actually so as well i think it was my round one and it just worked that way as well uh one striker dragon one sp little knight sp is insane never made this never made amblo whale never went into this either every time i could have gone into this i just chose to go into this instead because the matchups were just this was better right so i don't know these are good if you don't if you get hit with d barrier like i did but uh, in, in general, you still want to play the Link Monsters, IP and Phoenix as well. Phoenix is just another good fire that uh, works well for back row removal. But uh, yeah, that's it. If, if In my opinion, though, I'll, I'll say this, like, these are all cuttable. These five cards over here are all cuttable. Um, you can even argue this is cuttable. And when I went Prosp, a lot of the times I just Prosp for these six because I'm just like, yeah, I'm not going to make them. Especially if I'm going second and I saw my opponent doesn't have D-Barrier, I'm just like, all right, I don't care about my Link Monsters anymore. But yeah, the extra deck, in, in general, you don't need too much of it. Like, I would say there's like four or five cards you need it was just really the tenpai monsters and then the odd eyes meter burst was like mvp as well for me so yeah that's it for the extra deck uh honestly yeah if you haven't tried to drive you on play it in there otherwise wouldn't really change it up samurai warrior i didn't like i never saw myself needing it uh i can't remember what the other standard cards are that you play in the extra deck now but that, this extra deck was fine it worked perfectly fine moving on to the side deck though here um it's funny because i actually only really saw one side the card the entire day literally the entire day so i sided this in never saw it sided this in never saw it this card is insane by the way but i just never saw it um, my theory is is if you go forced to go first and you have this and let's say you have like a board like hand, cards in hand to make like uh, spheres and all that stuff you don't need to do it just activate this stall a turn keep your resources right so that's why this card is still insane this card right here mvp kwaki mero drago bro when i was forced to go first and i cited this in every time this card is absolutely insane so for anyone who doesn't know essentially it locks uh, both players out of special summoning light monsters light or dark monsters right and that's really insane because against you bell against so many decks like the fiendsmith stuff is light the Ubel stuff of course is dark um i play light and darkness dragon funny enough and those are all dark and light as well so i kind of shut them out even labyrinth labyrinth is all dark pretty much so shut them out this card was absolutely insane in all my matchups that i played it and then the nice thing about it is it has an effect where at the end phase it destroys itself unless you either reveal a iron core of the quacky marrow or a dragon type monster most of the time you can reveal to keep this on board but i never did like i really never did because i was like you know what let's just get rid of it now so i have access to my lights and darks and that was really relevant as well so this card mvp for me i always always made it never saw this card it was good in theory never saw it never saw this either i'm not main decking it i'm only side decking it for when i'm forced to go first um sided these in a lot too never saw them sided these in too these are just different hand traps for when some of your hand traps are like not that good or board breakers might not be good like if there's ever a matchup where bestials are not like that, that good you can side these kind of four in when you are going uh first 
um, or second, sorry, I should say second, not first. But yeah, when you're going second, these are kind of your options here instead of bestials when bestials are bad. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the deck profile. Um, first place, guys, like I said, uh, we didn't really pull that good for my first place packs. But you know what? I'm still really happy. It was my first time really taking this deck to a real locals and playing it through. And this deck is absolutely insane. It does so much so well. I, I always thought going first was like the weakness of the deck. But to be honest with you, you can go first and still make some pretty crazy boards. Even if you're not making crazy boards, when you're, when you're playing so many hand traps and imperm and droplets, like these are all cards that are good going first and second. So it's like, yeah, if you're forced to go first, yes, it sucks. But if you're ending on seals, droplet, imperm, like that's more than enough in, in a lot of matches, right? So uh, yeah, Tenpai, first place, baby. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, though, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content like this one. Also, make sure to check out Spanko Duels. That's where I post my locals content when I play these decks and I actually like win with them you guys can see how i win with them and why i win with them and how it's played etc etc that's really all i gotta say so make sure to like and subscribe thank you cameraman for uh for helping me out with this of course i appreciate you with that guys thank you and out peace